Today on Lady Trady, we are going to make over this old fashioned solid timber table. To do that today, I am going to be using a chalk paint with a nice soft brush to paint the base um, in a nice medium grey colour. And then I'm going to be sanding the top back and using a nice clear water-based varnish for a natural look on top. Now the first thing that I need to do is give it a really thorough clean. So I'm just using some laundry detergent or dishwashing detergent and a nice microfiber cloth to pick up all of that old dirt and dust that it has built up over the years on the table. I've squeezed this out thoroughly so that it's just a damp cloth to do that because I don't want my timber to get too wet. Sometimes it's helpful to have an old paintbrush um, ready because that paintbrush will get into all of the joins and all those little nooks and crannies in the detailed base and the legs. Then it's as easy as painting the base with my chalk paint and then sanding back and re-varnishing my surface. Now while I was washing, I noticed that there's some rub marks and scuff marks, but also where a dog has chewed on the feet of the table. So I'm gonna give it a really light sand. I've got a 120 grit roll of sandpaper that I always just have on hand. You can just fold it if you like. I'm just gonna use a little sanding pad. Sometimes it makes it a bit easier to grip. And all I'm gonna do is just lightly sand where there's chew marks just to smooth that surface so there aren't gouges because if there's gouges in it even when you paint over the top you're going to see the gouges perfect all right so unless you want paint on your floor it's probably important to lay down a drop sheet or some butcher's paper or newspaper just to protect your floor from spillage and drips just fucking spilled it everywhere <laughs> And that's why you need paper down. Okay, now with chalk paint, um, there's a lot of info online about how to use it and different techniques that you can get. You can have that weathered effect or streaky or smooth. It, there's lots of different ways. A lot of people use it as a base coat and then apply a secondary layer as a top coat. Um, using a nice smooth brush or a foam brush. Sometimes people even use a roller. I'm just using a nice soft edged brush today um, and I just love how it can more easily get into grooves and things. I use these for painting pretty much everything that I paint. Now I'm not going for that weathered look today. I don't particularly like it. I'm going to go for a smooth finish. I'm going to play it by ear though. So I'm doing a base coat now. I'll let that thoroughly dry and then I'll do a secondary coat. A lot of people online recommend in between the coats to lightly hand sand it. That way if there's any streaks coming through, you can sand them down. And then you do your second layer and you don't have the two layers of streaks. So when you're using a brush, it does have brush strokes. Um, and if you want to avoid them, that's when you will sand in between. So we're going to go for a smoother effect by giving that a go today. While my base is drying, I am going to come out and sand this table. I'm going to sand underneath and on top so that it all has a consistent finish. Um, to do that, I am using a small Ryobi hand sander that is battery powered, so the battery pops on underneath. Then I'm not tripping over cords and things like I have done previously. Um, you want to get yourself a coarse sanding pad, so usually you can buy these separately. I would recommend getting a 60 grit or 120. That way you have either option available. So it just depends on the lacquer and the finish that has been used on your table or furniture piece previously. So 
the thicker the lacquer, um, and sometimes the older it is, the coarser the sandpaper that you're going to need in order to remove it. Don't expect to just run it over once and it be perfect. You have to go over it multiple times. You have to apply pressure. So if you're using a small sander like this, even a big belt sander, you actually have to push down on it. You can't just let it glide across the top because then it will just glide across the top and not actually sand anything. So um, you can see in the video, I am just doing small movements up and down and around just to try and get through that lacquer. As soon as I'm through it, it's much easier. I can just tidy up the timber underneath, make sure it's not scratched, but it's just getting through that lacquer that takes time. So don't give up. Now the top is finished. I'll talk about some tips when doing furniture like this. So the first one is when you are sanding, no matter what type of sander you use, um, you need to go with the grain of the timber. That way you're avoiding scratching and tearing it up and it looks a lot nicer in the end product when you stick with the grain. Uh, make sure that you apply pressure. So when I was using my sander, um, you would have noticed I was actually pushing down with both hands. Applying pressure really, really helps with hardwood like this. If you are using or refurbishing softer wood or laminate, you don't want to apply pressure because that gouges into the wood and doesn't have a nice finish. So work with the timber that you've got. Okay, the third thing is to regularly change the sanding pads. So I went through six sanding pads just to do this table. I can use them for another project. Um, they're just not as coarse as what they were originally. So by going through those sanding pads, you're actually making your job easier. If you're trying to sand with a pad that's worn down, it's gonna take a lot more work. Uh, the fourth thing is regularly brush off the dust. So as you're sanding, it builds up. You want to get that out of the way, otherwise you're just sanding on top of dust, which again is making more work for you because you're not actually cutting down to the timber. Uh, the fourth thing is be patient, allow time. Don't try to do this project in an hour or two. This might be a two or three day project for some people, it might be a full day project. Um, so depending on the size of the furniture, it also depends on how stubborn that paint was originally and how long it takes to get off. So allow yourself plenty of time. Finally, wear the correct PPE, so personal protective equipment. Um, so you would have noticed I wore a dust mask, I had um, safety goggles on, you might like to get earmuffs as well. So inhaling that dust and getting it in your eyes is no fun. So wear the protective equipment to avoid that and that includes sun protection. So cover up, have a hat, whatever you need to protect yourself so that you don't regret doing the job. So the top is all sanded now. I just need to do around this edge. Now it's a curved edge obviously on this round table so I need to be cautious when doing it. Now I applied a lot of pressure when doing the top. I don't want to apply pressure on the edge because if I apply too much pressure it might cut into the timber rather than just sand off the, the lacquer or the varnish. Um, and I'm also not going to come at it like flat on because then I might actually end up with a flat edge, a flat edge and then a top and I want it to be round. 
So the technique that I'm using here is to gently glide back and forth across like that. Now I can put it flat on down on the lower edge because that is flat, but it's this section here that I really want to just keep that curve the way it is. So I'm coming at it diagonally, moving across in that motion all the way around. Now it may leave, as you can see, I've done a little bit here. It may not get all the way through. I don't want to keep going over that because that's when I will start to get flat spots and it will look terrible. So it might mean you need to come and do a little bit by hand, but as you can see, that took no time at all. Um, so the next thing that I need to do is I'm going to reassemble the table in the garage. So I'm going to put the tabletop back on the base and the legs, which is complete. And then I can use my clear varnish and give it two or three coats to protect and seal the top of the table. So I would normally buy a water-based product because it's just nicer to clean up afterwards and I don't really like having turpentine in my house. It also doesn't smell as much when it's water-based, but this is a turpentine one. They do give a glossier, smoother finish, I find. Just prefer not to use such harsh chemicals usually. So Terps products work just as well. They stink a bit more, um, but they do leave a nice smooth finish. It is a little bit thicker so and stickier, so you have to be a bit more mindful of time, but it'll be worth it in the end. Okay, so I've done the first coat of my varnish. Now, another downside to using the turpentine-based um, varnish is that there is a six hour drying time. Water-based ones are thinner and don't take as long because they're not as sticky and tacky. So they dry out much faster. Um, but you can see already that it's, it's a beautiful finish. It's looking really lovely. Um, something else I thought I would quickly mention is you would have noticed, as with sanding, when brushing, brush with the grain, okay? That way you're not going to see any streaky marks at the end. Now you have a few options before you do your second coat. So I could come along and lightly sand this with some really fine grit sandpaper, um, or you could just apply your second coat. Because I've already spent so much time sanding and my surface is really good, I'm just gonna go ahead in a few hours time and give it a second coat. Here is the final product. Um, it's got a beautiful satin finish. Looks much better than the old orange table that it was prior, um, with a nice new coat of varnish on top, just to freshen it up. The legs are much more modern now, even if it is an antique style. That grey colour rather than the uh, varnish timber just looks a lot more modern, um, and it's much more suitable for a modern home. So you can do this yourself. It's really easy to pick up old furniture like this off Marketplace or Gumtree. There's always a furniture item around for you to renovate, rejuvenate or repair. So if you want to see more of these types of projects or some other do-it-yourself home renos and repairs, um, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and click the little bell and it will notify you every time that I post a new video.